Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about a common problem that usually arises when you are going to be using switches in a number of microcontrollers including the Arduino and that is the floating input or floating pin condition actually this is among the commonest challenges that you are going to find especially for beginners when you are using switches and uh, I recently got a challenge when the question rose up from one of my subscribers here yeah? and one of the projects I did on the digital clock so I got an idea of making a simple video so that I can address that challenge okay I will address it using this simple setup here in this case I have a simple push button switch I'm assuming you know how this switch works for this switch one side is going to be connected to the ground on the other side is going to be connected to one of the digital pins of the Arduino board. For example, in this case, I've connected it to pin 3. Then I have my LED here. And that LED is going to be connected to Arduino pin 5. Then I will design a simple program. And in that program, what I want is that whenever I press the button, the LED lights, if the button is not pressed then the LED will not light now let's have a look at the program this is the simple program we are going to use for our setup actually it's rather simple we just have to configure pin 3 as the input that is where we are going to put our push button then we configure pin 5 as the output that is the LED and then in the loop we are just going to have a simple object that reads the status of the digital pin 3 in other words if the push button is high then you are going to have our LED low in other words the LED will be off then if the digital pin is low the LED will light so let's upload and see what happens here now we discover even before even before I press the button the switch is lighting and even even when I press and do what nothing happens actually there's no change when if you press so in most cases that is what we call the floating input floating pin condition and this one usually happens because now there's no external pull up resistor on this connection between the switch and the digital pin of the board we are using so usually that floating input or floating pin condition causes what we call noise there's a noise voltage in other words the this microcontroller cannot read the kind of voltage here it cannot read whether it is high or low so this is a common challenge and you're going to find that in most cases if you're using switches if you don't put an external pull up resistor you of course get something like this some other times you may find that whenever you can press the switch it works then some other time it does not work sometimes it gives you irregular readings so to be able to solve this problem what you do is simply have to include an external pull up resistor in my case i'm going to be putting a simple resistor here of 10 kilo ohms you can use any resistor from around 1 kilo ohm is enough to around 50 kilo ohms any pull-up resistor can work so you discover what I've done here is I have put a pull-up resistor between this connection from the switch to the pin 3 then I've connected a pull-up resistor to the VCC of 5 volts so now let's upload the code and see what happens so now the code is uploaded now you see when I press, press the LED lights. When I release the button, the LED goes off. I press again, the LED lights off, it goes off. So in that case, the condition has been corrected. That's a very simple solution and it's a very common one. So we put a pull-up resistor. But in most cases what happens in the code is that that pull-up resistor 
inverts the logic of the push button in other words whenever i press the button that means the dictator pin is going to be read as low and when the button is open or it's not pressed it's going to be read as high as you can see in the code okay so that's it all right however what i wanted to really talk about is that the Arduino board has inbuilt pull-up resistors of around 20 kilo ohms, 50 kilo ohms. So in most cases when you're dealing with Arduino and switches, you don't really need to put those external pull-up resistors. But as you can see from the code we used before, the reason why the pull-up resistors were not working was because we did not activate the, res the resistors in our code. So we need to learn a simple trick in the code which can enable us to activate the internal pull-up resistors of the Arduino so that you don't really need to use these external pull-up resistors. So in case you are designing a project where you are having very many switches, it reduces on the number of components that you are going to be cluttering on your board and which are not necessary. So Let's see how we activate the pull-up resistors on the internal Arduino board. So to activate our internal pull-up resistors, we only have to change only a simple part of the code. And that is here. As you can see, we add this part of the code. Initially, we configured pin 3 as an input. But now, we include this pull-up, like a keyword pull-up. In other words, that means we are activating the internal pull up resistors of the Arduino. The rest of the code remains the same. So we have uploaded the code. And now if you press the button, you see the LED lights. When you raise the button, the LED goes up. You press LED lights, you release it, the LED goes off. So in that case, you don't really need to include an external pull up resistor because you have activated the internal pull up resistors using the code so that's a very important point remember especially whenever you're using switches with arduino you don't necessarily need to use external pull up resistors because you can use the inbuilt pull up resistors by activating them in the software so that's what i wanted to talk about today hope you've learned something new to be able to help you to double troubleshoot some of your problems in a coming projects thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and like my videos